When we think about finance, what comes to mind may include bank accounts, stock market, mortgages, mutual funds, hedge funds, derivative securities, venture capital, private equity, and IPOs. Of course, these are all parts of finance, financial products, services, markets, and institutions. But in fact, finance is a lot more important and fundamental to our economy and our welfare. It is really about how to make the best economic decisions or how to best utilize the limited resources we have to meet our economic needs. We would like to illustrate this point with an example. Suppose that you are a marketing manager at a company. You are thinking about a new marketing campaign for your existing product line. Independent of the details of the plan, being online or through regular media, the ultimate goal is to increase future profit from increasing sales. Of course, the plan could cost some money. Let's assume that the cost of the whole marketing plan is $10 million today. If launched, it will increase the firm's profit from new sales by $12 million next year, for sure. To keep things simple, let's assume this is the only benefit from this marketing plan. The overall cash flow for the marketing plan, which we also refer to as a project using a more generic term, is given in the chart. A downward arrow represents a cash outflow a negative cash flow, and an upward arrow represents a cash inflow, a positive cash flow. Your decision is whether to launch this project. How do you make this decision? It would be too simplistic to simply say our net profit is 12 minus 10, that's $2 million. This, this is a good deal. This is because $12 million in new profits is next year, and it cannot be simply net with the $10 million cost today. They are money at different points in time. Thus cannot be compared directly. But how should we compare them then? We can also view this as an investment, investing $10 million today and returning $12 million next year, yielding a sure return of 20%. Is a return of 20% a good deal? Maybe, maybe not. It depends. In the absence of other information, answers to these questions may become a subjective judgment. However, suppose now we know that one-year bank deposits offer a sure interest rate of 5%, then we can answer this question easily, clearly, the project offers a good deal. It gives us a sure return of 20%, which is much higher than one can get from other investment opportunities in the financial market, such as bank deposits, which are easily available to everyone. Thus, by taking on this project, we are earning higher returns and thus creating value for the shareholders and the society at large. What if the interest rate in the market is 25%? Then clearly this is not a good project. Shareholders can easily invest their money in a market to earn 25%, which is higher than the return the project gives. Investing in the project would be destroying value rather than creating value. In the scenario above, labeled A in the graph, we only need to value a single cash flow, $12 million for sure in one year. How about if the $12 million is spread over the next three years, $4 million each year, shown in the plot as scenario B? In this case, we need to know how to value cash flows in different points in time. Given that the cash flow arrives in the future, most likely they are uncertain. This is scenario C, in which $4 million each year 
only represents our forecast of the cash flow. Its realization is uncertain. It can be lower or higher than $4 million. This is reflected also by the lighter blue color we use to describe the cash flow. In this case, the assessment of the project further requires us to know how to value risky cash flows in the future. This example leads to two key conclusions. First, a business decision, in this case a marketing campaign, ultimately is about how to value a project or its cash flows. This is fundamentally a finance problem. Second, devaluation is not a subjective exercise, but determined by the financial market. Of course, what we call a project can be any business activity. It can be a marketing campaign, like the, an example. It can also be an expansion of the current product line, an R&D initiative, an acquisition of another business, an upgrade of the current IT system, a reorganization of existing workforce, and so on. So finance is the basic tool we need to value these activities and to make sound decisions. The previous example illustrate the fundamental importance of finance in economic decision making. It is about the bottom line of any business activity. More generally, a business activity involves acquiring and disposing assets. Here, an asset refers to anything and everything that is of economic value. Its shape and form can be very generic. It can be a real asset, like a plant and machinery, or a financial asset, like cash and bonds. It can be tangible, like land and stocks, or intangible, like brand name, goodwill, and ideas. All business activities serve two basic economic functions. One, to grow wealth or create value, and two, to manage existing wealth to best meet future economic needs, as shown by the previous example we have just discussed. Therefore, a business decision starts with the valuation of assets. You can't create and manage what you can't measure. Value is an objective measure. It is determined by the financial market. Valuation is the central issue of finance and business decision making. So the questions we would like to answer in this course are as follows. First, how to value assets. As we've seen, all business decision makings first require the proper valuation of the assets involved. Second, how should firms make sound financial decisions? For example, what projects to invest in? That's sometimes also called capital budgeting or real investment decisions. How to finance a project? That's a financing decision by either issuing financial claims or securities such as loans, bonds, and stocks. Third, what to pay to shareholders. That's often referred to as payout policy. And also, what risk to take on or to avoid. And that's sometimes also referred to as risk management. And third, how should households make financial decisions? We will address these questions by developing and applying a unified analytical framework and a set of basic finance principles.